What's up, Foot Clan? Merry Christmas. Well, Christmas is in the past. Week 17 is on the docket. We're going to get you ready for those Week 17 title games. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Coming to you from pristineauction.com studios with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. It's almost football time for some of you. Hope you had a wonderful Christmas day. I did. I did. I did. It's been difficult for us to acclimate to it being Thursday. Mentally, it's Monday for all of us. In fact, like Al Borland sitting back there in the producer chair said he's got the Monday blues. Yeah. To, well, I've got the coming in the day after Christmas blues. Yeah. Three or four times on Christmas while we're just having this, you know, opening up presents, the spending kids time are, with family, the kids looking at, we've got to put together scooters and we're playing outside and we're talking about what we're doing this week and we're going on a vacation for, for you know, that was one of their Christmas presents. And then three or four times it'd be like, oh, I work all day tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah, the, you're that, here. The kids are off school, and I'm here. There's something about, and this is just being honest, is part of it is it's week 17. That is a huge part It's, of it's it. actually all of it, I think, <laughs> because if it was week 16 and we've got titles on the line, the motivation, you'd be sitting here on the cusp of a dynasty matchup. and Yeah, you know. but instead I sit here as a champion of that dynasty league yeah. back to back. I thought you had been eliminated weeks and weeks ago based on pessimism. Pessimism. Yeah, no. Um, but you know what Christmas Day has become as you as you grow older. Now you and you know the joy of your children. It transcends you know like the fact that you're older and you don't have, you know you're not sitting around with your parents and getting gifts. Like it changes as a parent. But I think what Christmas Day actually is. It is official parent box collecting day. Oh, we get so many boxes. I mean, I just feel like all I do on Christmas day is walk around collecting whatever box the presents came in and trying to find a place to put it. I have a genuine question. Yeah. Because I believe I know the answer and I want to I'm be glad wrong. glad it's genuine. I want to be wrong. Are you the person that cuts down every single box? Like cuts them down and oh. to, so that you can fit them all in the garbage? Every single box, no. Occasional boxes, yes. Okay. I have a razor blade designated for that. Yeah, yeah that. Yeah, yeah that's yeah, what I, you got it. I will hey, not Al, be doing that. Al Borland, do you cut your boxes down? Yes. Yeah, yeah. you but do. But that's fun for he's got a machete back there. He's just going to town. Yeah, it takes him ten seconds. Yeah. It depends on it's a scale of a box thing and how lazy I feel in the moment. We have a pretty big announcement. Speaking of champions, oh yeah, you do. I do. Don't we? Don't we have? I guess we recorded Monday. So the official championships weren't declared. So you won Dynasty. Yes. And. But I was talking more about our people. I, I know. I was talking about the Foot Clan. Okay, go go ahead. But the Megala Bowl. Yes. Winner. Yes. Colt Dorsey. Done. Colt Dorsey. Well done, my man. Yes. I See, I, I thought you were going with the fact we won the Sleeper Bowl. I didn't know where you were going there because we hadn't had official declarations. Colt Dorsey, 204.92 points. The official winner of the more than 7,000 entered Megala Bowl. Congratulations. Colt Dorsey, the first entry into the Listener League for 2020, will receive a uh, quite illustrious trophy. Not true. He is now the second person oh. in because Captain Sink did beat Mike in uh, the championship game of for, for the, the, Listener the Listener League. So he is back as well. We also won the Sleeper Bowl. We uh, we knocked off Nelt in the finals, so we got that one. Took care of the CBS championship, got that one locked up. And uh, on a personal note, my eight-year-old won his championship. Dude, that was so <laughs> awesome. First time ever playing. He was so excited. He'd been spending some Sundays in the studio watching with us. It was crazy because, I mean, he's a child, so he has to go to bed. And... We, and this is, you know, Monday Night Football. He had Aaron Jones, and it was he was facing Mike Boone, and it was he had like a half point lead, so it was just heads up. And so he went to bed before the big touchdown run by Aaron Jones, and he even told me, he "Goes, don't come in my room and surprise me. I want to find out in the morning." Mm. So he woke up a champion. He was excited. Um, it's been a fun week. It's 
been a fun week. Uh, reminder, if you want to celebrate in style, head to shopballers.com. We have the 2019 Foot Clan title shirts over there. You can look, like, look like a champion. Yeah. And um, a reminder next week. We've got footy nominations. We've got the footy award winners. We've got the truth episodes coming up. You've noticed another absence in the studio. <gasps> Mike is not here, but not for lack of trying. He was He was here. physically here. He was actually right where Jay Grizz is, but he looked like he had like drank a jug of poison. He did look like that. He also, I mean, he had several coats on and could barely speak, and we said... Just please leave. Yeah. He he, he was, was going to try. Mike makes the show even better. If that's possible, Mike makes the show even better. That Mike would not have no. made the show better. He made a, a choice for you, the listener, uh, to go home and shiver in his own bed. He he got sick uh, this Christmas. It's a nice so. Christmas sickness. Yeah. Probably his kids. Yeah. Yeah. All right. You can find us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. I encourage everyone out there. If you need more footballers in your life, which soon we go to two shows a week in January. If you need a little bonus show, join the foot.com. A lot of people, uh, congrats on all the championships. That's the by far the most rewarding, satisfying, fun part of our job is we hop on the social media and then Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday this week, everybody celebrating the Foot Clan title. And obviously not everybody won. Only one person wins in every league. But a lot of Foot Clan titles out there, a lot of very excited, happy people, some people repeating, some people three-peating. Some people for the first time in 10 years, you know, some people that started 0 and 7 who yes. somehow got in and won a championship. I, I, we yeah, always I, have Yeah, I retweeted those. that one where it's like... We always have the 0 and 4s, 0 and 5s, every now and then an 0 and 6. This is the first 0 and 7 I've ever seen. Yeah, I don't really even know how the math works out. I mean, it's you, you started 0 and 7. It was late playoffs. And it was great as he won every game after 0 and 7 to get into the playoffs and then won the championship. But one of the games he won by like point one points. It was like, if that game doesn't go your way, the comeback can't happen. But we always say, I mean... You can do it. You yes. can come back from a tough start. Uh, you know, we had <laughs> we had the winner of one of our dynasty leagues was the person who literally scored the least amount of points in the league. I've never seen it never. before in my life. Kyle, he, the stupid editor at this point for getting a championship over Brooks and Kyle, Damon, the stupid editor. That's what we call him. with the worst team ever. And basically, that means he had Kenyon Drake. Yeah, had Kenyon Drake take him through the playoffs. So. A lot of fun, but what I was going to say is um, people out there, you're excited, uh, you're happy, we're with, we're glad you were with us all year long. You can check out jointhefoot.com, support the show, get an extra episode every week, hang out with us all off season, because there's really not like, it's really not really an off season. It's just the preseason for 2020, and it gets started in a couple of weeks here. So, all right, let's get into some news. News and notes from around the league, presented by Sleeper. Beast mode. Oh, Marshawn Lynch is back. Beast mode back. One year contract for Marshawn Lynch going back to Seattle. Robert Turbin also signed. Yeah. Robert they, Turbin got the most like I'm friends with the quarterback deal here that you could ever have. Like I, I Robert Turbin was at Russell Wilson's wedding. Like so I feel like you lose everybody, and Russ is like, I got a guy. They needed a lot of running backs because all of their running backs ended up just getting injured at the same time. Now, if I'm playing one this week, it's 100% Travis Homer. And it is. I said earlier this week that, you know, oh, I would I would play beast mode. And my point there is I think he's going to be good. <laughs> like, I do. But, uh, you know, Pete Carroll has come out and said that the team is going to lean on Travis Homer to start. This is for the playoff run. So if you're in a Week 17 championship match, unfortunately, you won't be beast mode. Yeah, but Travis Homer would be a pickup. Seattle needs to win this game. It's one of the kind of highest uh, importance. Is that the most important games this week? Highest impact. Hi yeah. Not every game has something on the line this week. But for both of these teams, it's actually a very important matchup. San Francisco can can take the number one seed in the entire NFC with a win, and Seattle could, you know, knock them off that pedestal if I mean, they win. You're talking about do you want a first round bye, and then a home game, or, yeah? Or would you like to go on the road 
and have to play week one as the five seed. Exactly. Because that's what happens for both of these teams. Yeah, so I, you're in a situation there with a um, very important matchup. Travis Homer scares me now that Turbin and Lynch are there because I don't think he's going to not get any I really, play. I, yeah, I, I, you might be right, but Hol Niners. Homer had a ton of receptions last week, and um, he'd be my odds-on favorite to, you know, to lead in, in touches. Kyler Murray's hamstring is okay. Uh, MRI revealed nothing alarming. In fact, I think he's practicing this week. Yeah, it seems like he was expected to practice, so I would imagine he plays. And the Cardinals uh, face the Rams. Rams may rest some players. They won't have Jalen Ramsey. It's actually more of an upside situation than you might think because the Rams are eliminated. Terry McLaurin in concussion protocol being reevaluated today. The, the e Go ahead. That's, that's a big one because Case Keenum is the quarterback. The matchup is good. Terry McLaurin is a great play this week, but you'll need to monitor because he might not be playing this week. Yeah, making him a worse play. Right. Yeah. Steven Sims. Yeah. He's out there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He's just the kind of guy I want to sign and have disappear I said, this week. I, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, I like that I said if he's out there. <laughs> If now may, most leagues, Stephen Sims is clearly taken. Most leagues are over, Jason. That's we haven't true. even done a PSA about the fact that we're rolling in here for the six percent. See, here's the thing: I like doing the PSA about don't play Week 17 championship next week and last week, every week of the year except for this week. Yeah, because this week if you're the people here listening, they got to, those yeah. leagues and they know they already know. Well, we are here and we we know the scenarios, the players playing. We're going to give you our. Um, our best advice so you can get that Week 17 title because you're going to be in – I mean, the guys that carried you here, some of them are sitting down this week. So, uh, Jay Ajayi, his uh, run in Philadelphia was a short one. They're releasing Jay Ajayi. From the NFL. Yes. The Eagles have said, he, I release you from all of the national football. You are league. released from trying out on any other teams. He, it took a lot for him to get a job, and then he lost it pretty quick. I don't, I don't think he ever plays. Again. But it does mean that Jordan Howard is coming back this week because the Eagles, with a win, make the playoffs, and they need players in the playoffs. Jordan Howard is going to be available. That helps that team. Do you play him? Jordan Howard, no. No, I don't think I do. You are correct. Uh, <laughs> you <laughs> have passed the test. John Harbaugh said that Lamar Jackson will not play in Week 17. We'll talk about that in the matchup. But uh, they're going to sit down a bunch of players. Oh, yeah. They, they've they already announced, I think, like seven guys that aren't going to be playing, and that's not the entirety of the list. I mean... And that doesn't mean that other players won't play a quarter or two quarters and sit down. Right. Mason Rudolph sent to IR with a shoulder injury, ending the season. Duck Hodges and the Steelers' last attempts to make the playoffs here against that shorthanded Ravens squad. It'll be Duck Hodges that needs to get them there. So... Uh, jointhefoot.com. You can also get the game day alerts. We'll give you the inactives list before the game, uh, the games on Sunday. News and notes is always brought to you by the Sleeper app. Don't miss a single piece of impactful news. Grab the app today. Uh, let's go ahead and jump into the Week 17 forecast. Fantasy forecast. All the games on Sunday this week, and every single one of them is a divisional rematch. Schedule makers changed it to this format. I, I love the divisional end of year. We've done that in our fantasy football leagues for years where the end of the year you play your three division mates, and it's always fantastic. Yeah. The NFL was like, man, those guys know what they're doing. Now, for us as prognosticators, it's even more interesting because you have – the narrative, the divisional narrative in general is like one that can create dysfunction with Vegas lines and what you expect. And, you know, out of the blue, Atlanta shows up as a defense in New Orleans, knocks off New Orleans middle, middle of the way through the season. Divisional games are strange. Now you mix in player availability with divisional games, playoff well, implications with divisional games. The nice thing is I know, and we'll talk a lot about w w what matters for certain teams and doesn't matter for other teams. And there are certain situations like Baltimore that it, it is actively does not matter. Um, but then there are teams where I feel like it matters a little bit to every team because it's divisional. They don't want their division. You know what I mean? Like they, they just that's my maybe that's enough to matter. Is just I don't the want pride. these people to have success. The Bears at seven and eight take on the Vikings at ten and five. The Vikings are just one point favorites in Minnesota. It's got just this thirty six and a half point over under. 
Look, the Vikings are in the playoffs regardless of what happens in Week 17 after that Monday night defeat, which, what, put Cousins at 0-9 on Monday Night Football? Yeah, it's real, real good. Um, but if you ask Booger McFarland, wins and losses don't matter. That's real, real Booger. <laughs> Man, I loved your, your tweet, by the way. It's so true. It's so funny. It, it, just brief detour. I know some people, you know, they're tired of the Booger bashing. I am and, not one of those. And people. I get it. I mean, like, it is what it is at this point, and Booger McFarland is not long for Monday Night Football. But um, Jason tweeted out the fact that, yes, Jason Witten stunk last year, and yes, Booger McFarland stinks this year. But there's a person out there. There's a human being. That hired them both. Who said, this is my crew. This is what I want to represent the Monday Night Football brand. I'm gonna, <laughs> I could pick from... There's a an infinite yeah, people amount of want choices that, job, right? that want that job, and they said, "That's my guy, and that's my guy." Wow, that person, that hiring director, or whoever it is, that's who needs to be fired. Yeah. So the Vikings are locked into the sixth seed, regardless of what happens this week. Um, Chicago won the first matchup between these two, sixteen to six, way back in week four. Uh, when you look at this matchup, I mean. Mike Boone was the big story of Monday night. He, he had, I think, one touch in the second half of the game. He did nothing he, with his touches in the first half. He got the workload as was expected and projected in the first half. He was the clear leader, and he sucked so bad that they came out and gave him one touch in the second half. Said, And then Amir Abdullah also sucked. Now, granted, Amir That's Abdullah, important. yeah, he didn't look any better. Um, he did catch a lot of passes at the end of that game in garbage time. So fantasy-wise, PPR, if you – Happened to have Amir Abdullah, which you didn't. Um, you would have been okay, but this game is means nothing to the Vikings. They're in the playoffs, locked to the sixth seed, no matter what happens. So I can't imagine they rush back either of their running backs. So you're going to have the same bad core of running backs, and you can try it again, but I wouldn't. That's what I was going to ask you. There's a try it again candidate on both sides, Mike Boone and then Anthony Miller who last week was a disaster. I mean, just uh, one catch, two yards. Is he on your radar at all, or is this like, is, yeah. he, is he punished? Yeah, no, the, the Anthony Miller is definitely on the radar. Anthony Miller was a guy I was off of last week because of the matchup against Green Bay. When Trubisky is playing a top-end passing defense, he stinks. Green Bay is a top-end passing defense, and he stunk, and there weren't enough targets to go around Anthony Miller's way. But this game against the Vikings where Xavier Rhodes has been terrible and they're a good rushing defense, uh, but not a good passing defense, and they've got nothing to play for, I think Anthony Miller's okay. I'm not off of Anthony Miller in this game. Honestly, this is a momentum game for Chicago. They can get back to 500, which is obviously not what their goal was before the season, but you don't have a losing season if they win this divisional matchup. Vikings with not a lot to play for. I like Robinson and Miller in this game. I think David Montgomery is okay. Uh, it, it, that's just a general comment about his everything about him. Right, he's okay. He's just uh, like ordinary. Right. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I mean, uh, this is also an important game for Trubisky after that garbage Green Bay game. He, I mean, what's the future for Chicago? What's the future for Matt Nagy and and Trubisky in this offense? So they have something here, pride to play for. Yeah. Yeah. And then Stephon Diggs, Adam Thielen. I mean, Adam Thielen was completely goosed. Do you? You can't go back to the well here. They're getting ready for the playoffs. No, I I don't think that there is a single Viking I would play. Not one. Falcons, Buccaneers. Buccaneers are one-point favorites. It's a 48-point over-under. And uh, the Buccaneers trying to get to 500 on the season. The Falcons salvaging the back half of this year. Um, that's where we're at right now. When you look at this matchup, both teams not making the playoffs. You like Jameis Winston this week. Uh, I do like Jameis Winston. I think this is, uh, you know, again, this is nobody out there outside of Andy Dalton is playing for their career more than Jameis. There's been so much back and forth. Is he going to be signed? You know, he's he's not for sure the Tampa Bay Buccaneers quarterback, you know. So uh, next year and off of his 15 interception performance last week, he's got something to play for. Um, this is a good game. I like this game because neither one of these teams has had anything to play for for several weeks, and both of these teams have been playing really well the last several weeks. So they're just they're going out here to play football and say we're better than our division mate. I, so this is going to be a good game. Number one start sit question on the week: Brashad Perryman, who had a very nice performance without a touchdown last week, 
or Devontae Parker. Devontae Parker taking on New England. For me, it's Perryman in that matchup. There are very few situations where Parker does not win over Perryman, but this is one of them. Yeah, I I, I agree with this. And this was uh, going to be Mike's start of the week, Brashad Perryman. All right. Let's uh, – oh, the number two starts it. Brashad Perryman versus A.J. Brown against Houston. A.J. Brown with a lot on the line. What do we think about Perryman or A.J. Brown? I, I, I can't I, – there is no world where I say A.J. Brown. Not against Houston. No chance. I mean, he had, he had a tough matchup against Marshawn Lattimore and still had a good fantasy game, even though it wasn't on the back of receptions because he's a tank. All right. Um, last year, by the way, week 17, Matt Ryan faced Tampa Bay 378-2. Julio Jones in 15 career games against Tampa Bay. He's averaging 10 targets, 7 receptions, 118 yards, and nearly a touchdown. He likes Tampa. I was, a, he loves the area. I was thinking really heavily on this uh, week, and I was like, you know, I'm <laughs> going to st start Julio this week <laughs> for my team. Hey, now. Hey, now. Um, Just kidding. I'm not playing week 17. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right. Before we get into Dolphins Patriots, which is actually uh, an interesting one, let's thank today's sponsor. We've got Zoom. Zoom supporting the show today. Look. Zoom did not invent video conferencing. We all know that that's been around for a very long time, a bunch of different people taking swings at it. What Zoom did was they made video conferencing better. Uh, Zoom is how business gets done. We, we always talk about, um, like we use uh, different products around the office to make us more efficient. Zoom is in that category uh, of video conferencing that actually works, that helps you get business done. Um, they tie together all of your communication needs into one easy app for video conferencing, phone calls, group chat, webinars, uh, your conference rooms. And, and here's what I like. Flawless video, crystal clear audio. There's nothing more annoying as a business than being in the middle of a conversation and having the screen freeze or you can't pan and zoom and see things that you need to see and you're sitting there waiting to resume a conversation and Zoom just makes it so that it works. It's used by millions of people to connect around the world. It's the web's best reviewed communication suite. And you can set up a free account right now at zoom.com. Don't wait any longer. Meet happy with Zoom. And hey, Foot Clan, Fantasy Champs is where you go to get your fantasy championship uh, belt or trophy. And it, I know what you're thinking. You're like, oh, last week, where was that place that they talked about this crazy deal where I get a free ring? when I'm a fantasy champion. Well, it's fantasy champs, because you're a fantasy champ, and the free ring coupon is free ring. Oh, one, yeah, yeah. One word. It's really simple. What Basically, do you get with that? You get a $60 championship Super Bowl-style ring that is awesome for free with the purchase of any trophy or belt. You're already going to get a trophy or a belt because you're, you're a smart person, and you got to commemorate your awesome championship. Now you put in free ring and you, you get, get a little a, bonus. Yeah, because a lot of people out there were like, well, man, I was going to buy one of those $60 championship rings. Hashtag worth it. Hashtag don't need to. Hashtag go to fantasychamps.com <laughs> and uh, use promo code free ring with the purchase of any trophy or belt to get a free championship uh, I will ring. say this. It, the way that the code works is you can't just put the code in at any time. You put in your trophy or your belt. Mm -hmm. And then you put the ring in the cart. Then you put the code in. Thank you. We had a couple of people ask about that. All right, Dolphins, 4-11. and 11. They go to New England. The Patriots, 12-3. and three. The Patriots clinch a first-round bye if they win the game, which they should, or Kansas City loses or ties. So the Patriots need to win this game. Um, a first-round bye, crucial for New England. <coughs> These teams, look, right now playing the Dolphins, as a quarterback, uh, that's a good thing. Yeah, it's, it's very a, it's good. a very very good thing. I like Tom Brady a lot. Do you remember when you're going to hear about him later? Do you remember when Andy Dalton threw like four touchdowns and had a just an, a monster fantasy? Oh my week? gosh, that seems like it was just yesterday. Yeah, it was well, it was last week, oh. but it was against these Dolphins. Yeah, it was. They just love giving up passing touchdowns. Patriots. Well, Vegas understands the importance of this game. They're favored by 16 points at home. It's a 45-point over-under. We expect them to take care of business, in part because Ryan Fitzpatrick and company will not be able to take care of business against this Patriots defense. 
who's on the on the cusp of finishing the year first against quarterbacks, running backs, and wide receivers in terms of fantasy points given up. I doubt Fitzpatrick and Parker are going to be able to change that in New England this week. Is there anybody at all that you're looking at? It? I know the answer to this. The Dolphins, you sit them down. Yeah, I mean, I, I, do, I do think Devontae Parker is not an auto sit. Okay. I, I don't think he is a guy that you have to sit. He's definitely lower. He's in that consideration where you're going, okay, do I have another good option? You know, a Brashad Perriman, who's, I mean, that's not great, but okay, we talked about, we take him. But if you don't have another good option, I do think Parker just has enough targets to do something. What about Gesicki chasing last week's performance? Uh, Patriots are all the way down at eighth ranked against tight end. I yeah. mean, compared to the other positions, they're really embarrassed. They give up it. eight points. I don't think you mess with Gesicki. I week. agree. All right. On the Patriots side, though, Brady, I love him. In this game, which is not something I've said out loud about any game all year. Haven't That's loved fair. Brady very often. Uh, Sony Michelle last year was 24 for 112 and 1 against Miami at home. Michelle was okay last week. And if you talk about a game with a 16 point, um, where the Patriots are 16 point favorites, yeah, Sony I mean, Michelle so could be good this week. Yes, yeah, Sony is, uh, is a good play. And it, it was in time. It w <laughs> Well, look, this is when he <laughs> does it. Look, last year. When they rode Sony Michelle to a Super Bowl on the back of him just dominating in these uh, late months and into the playoffs. Maybe they've been saving him up. And it wasn't just last week. The week before, he was 19 for 89. So you're talking about he's getting work, averaging, you know, over the last two weeks, 20 carries, 90-plus rushing yards, and in a in a home matchup favored by this much. If you can't play Sony here, you can't play Sony ever. I, I, would, uh, I would look for him. All right, um, let's move on then to, well, Edelman, by the way. Edelman may or may not be active in this game. He's been dealing with injury. He's been dealing with inconsistency for your fantasy team because of it. If he's active, is he a solid wide receiver too for you just because of the matchup? Yeah, the he matchup be, says right? he, he'll, he'll win, and I think that's fine. I, I would hope if I'm an Edelman owner, I genuinely hope they set him down. Packers taking on the Lions this week. Green Bay can clinch a first round bye with a win or several other scenarios where they don't win and the New Orleans loses or there's a tie, blah, blah, blah. Um, they also clinch home field advantage throughout the playoffs if they win and then Seattle beats San Francisco. So Seattle's not likely not playing for that first round bye throughout the, or the uh, home field advantage throughout the playoffs, but they could take it away from their division mate San Francisco and Green Bay could get it. And that seems like a fairly possible situation here with the way that you know, the game's up in Seattle. So Green Bay with a lot to play for here. Uh, the matchup against the Lions is is wonderful. Aaron Rodgers, like we said, play, play, cut, mm -hmm. cut, cut. Oh, man. It was play, back to back, cut, cut. Play, cut, cut. It worked. Play, you can play again. Yeah, I would, I would be willing to play Aaron Rodgers against the 25th ranked Detroit Lions who are giving up over 20 fantasy points per game to quarterbacks. And then uh, Devontae Adams, monster game last week in terms of targets, receptions. Uh, He's all they have. I, I think they have <laughs> they have verified that all of the other it's 100 right options stink. We Lazard is like a, a wide receiver three on a roster is fine to me, like as an NFL player. Yeah, I mean, I would but say he's, he's four, in, but sure. Okay. Marquez Valdez, Scantling, Geronimo Allison, Jake Kumaro. And how about the biggest one of all? Jimmy Graham. Oh, gosh. I don't even consider him a... Here, here's some start sits for Jimmy Graham this week for you. Jimmy Graham or eating gravel? Oh, gosh. I think I worry about my teeth. I'd go Jimmy there. Okay. Jimmy Graham or sitting at the DMV? <sighs> On that, I can get through that. I can I can get through the DMV. I'm going to take the DMV. Uh, Jimmy Graham or Cats the Musical? Oh, Jimmy. Jimmy Graham, okay. you my man. Jimmy Graham or getting a root canal? Oh, no. Jimmy Jimmy Graham. So, Jimmy so there Gra are there, some situations yeah, I you're would rather Jimmy. have Jimmy Graham. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's just a different kind of pain, though. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, one is boring and uh, stupid and senseless, and the others can really bring the hammer down on you. Aaron Jones, the running back two on the season. You're going you're gonna to play him. You're going to play him. Um, that, that feels stupid, man. I don't remember the last running back two on the season I've been. Wait, wait, this, he's, been he's had an incredible season. Well, Incredible. yeah, because he's, 16 touchdowns. Exactly. 16 Look, touchdowns. That's, it, I mean, you, the play has not seemed like that. Oh, has it has it absolutely seemed that way. Ask Brooks. Okay. What do you think? Brooks. 
Has the play seemed like the wide receiver two on the year? I guess Running I'm curious uh, his consistency. I'm cu- I'm curious to he, look at that. Yeah, he had he had some windows there where Jamal Williams showed up and he wasn't scoring touchdowns. But uh, to me, it's felt like a complete and utter breakout year for Aaron Jones. Al, am I alone in this? I love him, but I'm biased. You know that. Yeah, yeah he's, he's a, a Packer, Packer fan. Well, wow. anytime you can put up a, a running back two season, sixteen touchdowns. Make good on – I mean, I, would you agree he's made good on all the promise that he showed last year for the Packers' sake? I mean, he's been a bell cow for them. He's had multiple touchdown games over and over again. I, I, I love Aaron Jones as a talent and uh, certainly think he is, has broken out for fantasy. I do think that the touchdowns per rushing yards make no sense, and I would be surprised. This is what I'm talking about. Since week nine – Okay, if you take out, because he's had, in, in week five and week eight, he had monster week winning, you know, crazy multiple touchdown. He was the running back one on those weeks, which really inflates. Since week nine, he's the running back 21. So I was like, I'm not saying that's bad. Like, he's a running back two, but that doesn't feel like the running back two. You've just had these monster games that have really inflated. 47 receptions on the season, 4.7 a carry. So he's still chunking off plays, which is, you know, this is an Alvin Kamara type season from last year. Yeah. Where Kamara had an abundance of touchdowns. We knew that that was a tough number, but this team is rebuilt. This team is rebuilt for a different Aaron. I've I've never been more disappointed in a running back two, and I've two. never been less inspired by a team that's 12 and three. I don't I know, get it. People Maybe just, I'm just, I mean, I'm not anti Packers. I love the Packers. They're we're, a fun team. We're not used to seeing them play this way. They run the ball, and they show up on defense, and then Aaron Rodgers throws the ball away. That's what he does. He doesn't take negative plays. He has a few drives in him. I'm with you. I our, running back two on the year doesn't feel right. Running back two is a little bit up there, but a top, you know, a top ten, top five type of guy. That Aaron Jones has won people a lot of championships. Yeah, yeah, he has, including your son. So the Packers passing defense has been phenomenal. We we obviously saw that again last week. David Blau is not the quarterback that I want to go against them. The only question here on the, the receiving side of the ball for the Lions is Kenny Galladay. Do you start him in a tough matchup? I'm pretty much yeah, always fine. Uh, I'm always going to side with the talent. He is crazy good. You know, there were a lot of those questions last week in a bad matchup. And you said, yeah, he's he's just been – you're if going you to get up some in the red games. zone, who are you going to throw the ball to? Exactly. He's got the opportunities for touchdowns. And it came through last uh, week with a rushing touchdown. Some people have to watch this game. Browns, six and nine, take on the Bengals at one and fourteen in Cincinnati. The Browns are two and a half point road favorites. It's a forty three and a half point over under. Okay. Here we are. The Bengals clinched the number one pick. Maybe Joe Burrow's the quarterback for them next year. Uh yep. Yep. I think so as well. Freddie Kitchens, will he be back? Uh, Odell yep. Beckham because yelling they at- make bad decisions. I wouldn't be surprised to see them pivot from that bad decision now that you've got the... I would be so proud of them if they pivot because it's the clear and obvious right decision. Freddie Kitchens cannot be a head coach in the NFL. He he proved that this year. In week 14, Cleveland won 27-19, the same matchup. That was at home. Uh what are the fantasy decisions to be made here? Both of these teams have nothing to play for, really. Well, there's some injury news that you're going to need to stay on top of. For the Bengals' side of the ball, we saw Tyler Boyd and John Ross kind of get a little hobbled at the end of the game. Um, they were able to get back on the field and play, but I, I want to see them practicing this week because I, I do worry a little bit about their health. Um, maybe they shelve them unexpectedly if they're swelling this week so I want to pay a little bit of attention to that yeah and it's important Tyler Boyd was absolutely a monster last week nine for 128 and two on 15 targets Uh, Vegas has the game pretty close I think Boyd and Dalton or or, I'm sorry Boyd and Mixon um, are good plays Mixon was dealing with a, a bit of a an upset tummy yeah he was he had a an illness bug and it must have been like what Mike had yeah. because he did not perform well, but I'm not worried at all about Joe Mixon. He is a must-start player this week. If you made it through with his dud last week, don't be afraid of it this week. I think Mixon and Boyd the only two that you really want to consider here in this matchup against the Browns. Yeah, I agree. Um, on the other side, you know, Chubb leading the NFL in rushing. That's, wow, my goodness, 1,453 yards. 
Yeah, I mean, it it doesn't feel like 1,453 for fantasy because of the receiving work that's been going to Kareem Hunt, but he has been, he's just been outstanding this year. He's a great running back, and I think you can play both of these guys, Chubb and Hunt, this week for sure. Beckham and Landry, put them out there in this matchup at home. I guess it's a good matchup. Try to go out on top. Who Baker? Would you, who would you rather start, Jarvis or Beckham? Uh, I'll I'll take Jarvis. Me as well. Yeah. All right. Uh, David Njoku, by the way, has been out weeks 15 and 16. Coach's decision on both weeks, not injury. So I don't know if he's in the doghouse or the kitchen. Ow! Oh, oh, Ow! You did it! Ow! Oh. Chargers, 5 and 10. Chiefs, 11 and 4. Chiefs are nine-point favorites. Uh, they can still get a first-round bye if New England loses to Miami. <laughs> so they have got nothing to play oh, for. Oh, well, you never know. You never know what Ryan Fitzpatrick has in store, Jason. Now, historically, the Patriots have struggled with Miami. It's that true. Is, that is just letting people know. That's, but not that's usually true. in Foxborough, and they're favored by 16, so it's not happening. This yeah, the, since 2013, New England is just 7-5 and five against Miami. Uh, is that your almost upset of the week, Jason? <laughs> nope. Nope. It did work out last week. Didn't I have one? I think it was good. Uh, maybe. I think I, Let's say it was. I piggybacked with you. I think we both nailed Let's, it. I don't remember for, what it was. But me we, either. Good for us. We, yeah, great pick. Mm-hmm. Uh, Kansas City beat the Chargers 24-17 in week 11. Rivers has had a disastrous year. The Chargers aren't playing for much. This game's at Arrowhead. Oh, I think it was the Bills. It was the Bills against the Patriots. You know, you know who's playing great. That's what it was. The Chiefs' defense. The Chiefs are. I mean, look, they're I'm, surging. My preseason pick of Chiefs versus Saints in the Super Bowl. I'm loving right now because both of these teams are playing great, and the Chiefs they're being un, you know totally overshadowed by the Ravens. Everybody, the Ravens, Ravens, Ravens. The Chiefs are just dominating right now. They're not dominating on offense. They're dominating on defense, and then they're just <clears throat> super good at offense. I agree. Uh, the difference that um, the second half has meant to that defense, Tyron Matthew, how he's playing, it's changed their secondary. What do you do with Keenan Allen and Mike Williams? I mean, just for context, the Chiefs' defense is second in the NFL in terms of fancy points given up to the wide receiver position. Can you really trust Keenan Allen and Mike Williams at Arrowhead with Phillip Rivers, Jason? Every single week, I think this is the week that the Chiefs might be exposed as being a little statistically like they've been so good against wide receivers, but maybe it's anomalous, and I, I have to stop doing that. And when Phillip Rivers is your quarterback needing – so badly to retire, I feel like <laughs> I feel like it's going to be difficult to trust these options. Oh. I really do. Now that it's hard to sit Keenan Allen, you have to have other good options to sit him. But wide receiver two range this week, yes, like low low two range. All right, uh, Tyree Kill. Yep, Damian Williams. What's your? Give me the one word for Damian Williams this week. Okay. All right, that was uh, yeah, nice inflection. Yeah, because, I mean, look, Spencer Ware went to IR, so he's out, and he was on the field a decent amount. He was getting some run. Uh, now, that being said, Shady wasn't active. Um, so, I, you know, I think what you saw usage-wise last week with Damian Williams is going to keep up. He was okay, and this is a winnable matchup on the ground. The, the Chargers are a running funnel defense where they incentivize the run and stop the pass, so... Uh, you know, Damian Williams is an okay play this week. It, it, because he doesn't offer you anything by way of fantasy points, I wanted to give you a little bit of something from... Um, oh. Oh. Here, uh, he, I'm non-responsive, armed with a conscious. I breathe the laws of physics moving through the higher dimensions. I'm constantly shaping and shifting. I'm just here on a visit. That is a red... Cold. Oh, it's cold-blooded. That is a tweet. December 13th. Written by a lizard. Yes. Yes. Factually Sandy Watkins accurate. wrote that. I mean, his Twitter account is a joke. Like, it's like... It seems... Jack Handy, SNL, wise words. Like, it's that level of asinine. We are giving away a Sammy Watkins helmet. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> At FootClanGiveaway.com if you want a lizard helmet Travis Kelsey yep 
Hunter Henry, real disappointing second half. I don't think you can really trust him on the road here, but your options, what are you going to do over Hunter Henry? I mean, yeah, Hunter Henry's a playable uh, guy this week. We, you know, we talk about how they've been shutting about Kansas city has been shutting down wide receivers. Uh, they have not shut down the tight end position. So if that's the case here and they're kind of allowing that role to beat them, I think Phillip rivers would use Hunter Henry. I mean, you're not in love with it, but you don't have better options. And this is at least a good matchup. Jets six and nine taking on the bills at 10 and five. The Bills are uh, locked in as the AFC's number five seed. Uh, Sean McDermott said he will play a majority of the guys, but he also, like, if you go read the quotes, he also talked about Matt Barkley getting played in this game. Like, there is going to be limited work for all of their main starters. If I say I'm going to play the majority of the guys, that means I'm not playing all the guys. Yeah, that like, means there's a minority of the guys that are on the bench. It's not a good quote. It is being used yes. as, a, as a good quote to say, hey, the starters are playing. Well, the majority of them are. I mean, I love Devin Singletary here in 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 a hypothetical world where I knew he was going to. Yeah, be Yeah, I was going to say forever. I don't love I don't like him in this game because I think that he's a guy that they need to put on the on the bench or they're not going to win in the he's playoffs. Important to this team, he's looked great. He overtook the role from Frank Gore this last week, who didn't get any carries. But yeah, this isn't a matchup where I want to play. So, can you start Devin Singletary this week? Yes, I think there's a world where you you can't. But you need to be aware that the – I mean, obviously – It's they, mostly it, a no for me. It's like I am finding any other option that I know is playing football. I mean, hopefully you, – you need to be prepared for a pivot, and hopefully he's not active. If I saw – if Frank Gore got 95% of the work in this game, I, that would meet my expectation. I do not think that you're going to see a lot of single turn. So find a pivot. That's but what I would do. You're saying you wouldn't start him even if he's active and he's the starter going it, in because you think he might get a quarter. I think he's going to get very little work in this game. Uh, we know that the Jets' running defense has been uh, pretty okay this year. I mean, Singletary is a a great player, but I just don't see a world where they're getting down on the goal line later in this game and Devin Singletary's anywhere to be seen. So okay, let's talk about Josh Allen though. You talk about Matt Barkley. Josh Allen's I'm not been, playing Josh Allen. So you're not playing any Bills. You're just I'm, too I'm not worried with them. Yeah. that they're going to be uh, none of the riding the. Pine. There's nothing on the line for them. There's nothing. They're, they're in the exact same spot regardless of what happens in this game. You know what's on the line for them? If Josh Allen or Devin Singletary get hurt, the season's lost and they lose in the playoffs. Guaranteed. Okay. So, so that, I'm just very concerned. Other side of the ball. Does that mean with potentially you know defensive players for the Bills sitting, you know, are you going to start Tredavious White? Very or you important. mean Robbie Anderson? Yeah. Yes, I'm saying for the Jets, are you, are you interested in that because you're sitting – Buffalo Bills defensive players like Tre'Davious White. I, I mean, is the, the 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 logic would hold there, right? Yeah, I mean, I'm okay. If you if you don't think they're going to play Devin Singletary or Josh Allen, why would they play their star cornerback? Yeah, I think he'll get some work, and I think that Robbie Anderson is okay as like a wide receiver three category. Lev Bell as a running back two. But come on, this is just not. I mean, we're not excited with the Jets, no matter the matchup, really. That's, this year we're not excited. Yeah, that's true. I you know, it's it's really one of these week 17 conundrums of you we don't know, you don't know, the families don't know. There's like two people in the world that really know what the game plan's going to be here as far as how many starters are going to be playing and how much they're going to be playing through the game. Bills in, backups can shut down Sam Darnold. In general, in the, Buffalo. The Bills defense is solid. Their scheme is great. When Sean McDermott got to the Bills, and did not have a whole lot of uh, super talent there. In fact, they, I remember they, they cut some of their more talented guys. He put his scheme in place, and it it's worked since he got there. So I, I do agree. They're a tough defense. Maybe you avoid this game for the most part. Saints at 12-3 and three take on the Panthers at 5-10. and 10. They're 13-point favorites. They're playing everybody. They've already come out and said that. The Saints still have an opportunity to finish with a first-round bye. Um, clinch home. They could still clinch home field throughout the playoffs uh, if Green Bay loses and San Francisco loses. And while that matters to every team, I don't think there's any team that matters more. Well, maybe C Seattle and the Saints. They have such incredible disparities in their playoff record at home and away. I mean, it, it's like if you, if if New Orleans, you know, is is playing in New Orleans. That's a W, and they need that home field, so they're going all out here. Yeah, I totally agree. So you're playing 100% of your Saints with no issues? 
Yeah, I mean, uh, if you've got if you've got Breeze and Kamara and Michael Thomas, there there is there should be no question at this point. They're just too good. And Jared Co- Jared Cook Cook. I'd put Cook in that category. You know, I I went back and looked at my uh, ridiculously bold predictions for this year. Mm-hmm. That article that I put out every August, and um, you know, because I, I don't I don't remember them all. And it was funny that Jared Cook. I said he would have a career high in touchdowns. So I went and looked, and he did. Well, what? Yeah, he he has a career high in touchdowns this year with the Saints offense. Wow. So he's had a very good sec. I didn't think that that would. He has, I think, eight on the year. I was like, oh, he pro- he's probably done that. But um, he's eight? doing his cooking later in the season. Wait a minute. Eight is his career high? Yeah. Hmm. See what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. That's not great. Got, I guess- got one, year, one uh, game left, though. That's true. Maybe he'll get to double digits. Yeah, he's had a couple multi touchdown games this year. Very good year for Jared Cook. He's been a like an, a, a saver of teams. If you had Evan Ingram or some of these other tight ends that fell out, uh, and you picked up Cook halfway through the year on the other side of the ball, I mean, because you're starting your Saints on the other side of the ball. We verified with uh, complete uh, truth, just transparency that Will Greer is not good. He's Did, we? Not, Did yeah. we? It's, dec- it's been declared. It's been, it's been declared that Ryan there was, Finley has pronounced it. There was a reason that he was behind Kyle Allen for so long, um, and so yeah, that's. Uh, Can we reflect on the greatness that is Christian McCaffrey? Can we do that for this side of the ball? Isn't that worthwhile? It's week seventeen. I think this. I think we need to. I think it's disrespectful if we don't reflect on CMC. Maybe C- CMC as the running back one is why Aaron Jones feels so stupid at running back it, two. It honestly does because of the consistency. Aaron Jones has not been perfectly consistent. Neither has Saquon Barkley or Alvin Kamara or any of these other guys. He's He has this, the second highest fantasy points scored ever, ever for any player. I, leagues used to change, literally. I remember when back in the Ladania Tomlinson days, leagues had to change rules on – keeper situations and fantasy change because of LT because there was a stretch of years where if you had LaDainian Tomlinson you won the championship it was just done deal if my math is correct he only needs 23 fantasy points this week to have the greatest season of all time LT season was 471.1 and he's at 448.4 right now then I'm gonna trust that your math is correct yeah so uh you know DJ Moore no I don't think you can mess with the concussion and the Saints this week what do you think uh, yeah, I mean, I I was in on him last week, even with the Greer uh, situation, because he's been so good. Assuming he passes concussion protocol, because right now he's in protocol, if he's active, now you have the Marshawn Lattimore issue. And so I think the combination of Lattimore, Greer, I'm going to stay away. All right, it's time. Starts of the week. All right, Jason and I bringing you some Week 17 starts here. Tom Brady. Tom Brady is my start of the week. The old man takes on Miami. They need to win the game for a bye week. Miami is atrocious against, well, everybody, but they're especially generous with uh, quarterbacks. Tom Brady, multi-touchdown game, closing out the year, start of the week. So who do those go to? Uh, Nikhil Harry, James White. Matt Lacoste, who cares? Okay. It don't right. matter. So you're starting Tom Brady with confidence, but not the other weapons. Is- I Edelman, if he's active, I'll play him for sure. Okay. Yeah. Look, I'm going to stay with the guy who got you here, the guy that you clearly knew in preseason was going to win everybody all of the championships. It's Ryan Tannehill. He's been unbelievable. Him with A.J. Brown is, is just a gorgeous revelation for the National Football League, and he's playing for a lot. At Houston, whose secondary sucks. So, yeah, I'm all in. Um, By the way, I absolutely love Tannehill this week as well. I just had to bring Brady's name up because you haven't had the option to start him this year. Phillip Lindsay is my running back start of the week against Oakland. Finally had a breakout game last week. Um, Oakland, yes, they're still clinging to their playoff hopes, but Lindsay looked great, and I think he has an opportunity to, you know, in you talk about some of those sit downs like the Singletary. Oh, give me Lindsay all day long over Singletary this week. Lindsay, my start of the week. I was uh, telling Mike earlier, I was like, you should make Lindsay your start of the week. And then I realized he can't because oh. you had him. So oh, I, re- I really yes. like him. I'm sticking with my start of the week from last week, which is Marlon Mack. 
He did not get as much work as I wanted last week, certainly, because he could have smashed Carolina twice as hard. Weren't it, you concerned with the fact, you know, Wilkins in the game? Absolutely. On all these different situations? Absolutely. Why, why would they push Mac hard in, in this last week with nothing on the line? They didn't push him hard last week, and he had 100 yards and a touchdown, and now he's facing the only other team out there that's like Carolina where they just – the defense has quit – Jacksonville is spent. You can you run on them. You think he's a them. top 10 guy this week? Y yes. I okay. think I think he is. I, I think he's about what he had this last week. He's around 100 rushing yards and a touchdown. I, I like Marlon Mack this week. I think that uh, I want to play running backs against Jacksonville, and Marlon Mack is very good. Yeah. Playing against Jacksonville is delightful. Sterling Shepard is my wide receiver start of the week. Taking on Philadelphia, Daniel Jones had the monster week last week, and Philadelphia's secondary, well, Look, they have a lot on the line this week. Shepard will get enough target volume, enough work, I think, to do some damage. So I want to give you some confidence to play him this week, despite the fact that he's in Philly. All right, my wide receiver start of the week is Allen Robinson, and I'm going to throw in, I'm going to throw in Anthony Miller. I think both of these guys, after the just horrific, disgusting Trubisky performance this last week, are going to be fine. Minnesota has nothing to play for and their secondary has been bad in general so I think Trubisky is going to come out and throw the ball well and uh, I'm fine with these with these Bears wide receivers all right and I'm going to go with I wanted to go Higby at tight end and and you can and should I I am I am not going Higby you pivoted I for did no I did. dang reason no I did I, p I pivoted for the reason that I just don't know who's playing how long in uh, for the Rams this okay. this week because they got nothing on the line it's Arizona uh there's been some equivocation about how much people are going to play in that game Jalen Ramsey's missing the game Higby's fine I mean if you have Higby how do you sit down a guy who's had 400 yard weeks in a row so I don't think I'm against Arizona yeah I don't think I'm breaking news starting Higby Ooh, start Higby okay so I'm going but I'm going to go back to Hollister Hollister is facing San Francisco divisional matchup San Francisco has struggled against tight ends and this is the most you know, the highest impact game of the entire week. A lot on the line. Uh, no Chris Carson. Look, leaning on Travis Homer is not something that I think you do to try to uh, knock off your division, mate. I think you need to lean on your Lockett, Metcalf, Hollister situation. Hollister had the targets last week. Didn't come up with a big play or get in the end zone. I think he gets in the end zone this week against the 49ers. So I'm going to make him my Abercrombie start of the week. I like it. Uh, I'm going Dallas Goddard off of his monster performance last week. Zach Ertz is banged up. His ribs are hurt. There's a lot to play for for the Eagles, and the New York Giants are not great in the secondary. And, you know, usually I want the wide receivers against the Giants right now, except Dallas Goddard's going to beat the wide receiving core. There's just everybody's injured. So Dallas Goddard is pretty much, I feel like, a must start at tight end if you're in those you know later guys where you're fiddling with I don't know who I'm looking for the right matchup specifically and you're kind of streaming that position through your playoffs he would be my pickup and start for sure yeah I mean he's in consideration regardless of injury and now you deal with the the earth situation when you face the Giants why not um by the way if you have start sit decisions to make for week 17 check out the website thefantasyfootballers.com got the start sit tool up there all of our rankings for week 17 Jason Moore's Ironclad, Locked and Loaded, 100% Guaranteed Boom Boom Kicker of the Week. Two things I know. You can't make an omelet without breaking a few yolks. <laughs> and you can't win a championship without the Patriots' Nick Folk. I had to change it up there a little bit. That was, uh, it's week 17. Yeah, no, there's a, there's I mean, a, there's a, there's a home run. Yes, that's Perfect. that's what I was inferring, for sure. All right, we want to thank our studio sponsor, Pristine Auction, a Devontae Adams signed jersey yesterday on pristineauction.com, $68.50. That's a steal. Use the code BALLERS when you sign up at pristineauction.com. Let them know that we sent you. That'll do it today. We'll be back with you tomorrow, finish out the Week 17 matchups. Congrats to everybody who's already through it and looking forward to some very fun Truth episodes coming up. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com.
and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. And a reminder, Foot Clan, there's nothing like meeting face-to-face. There's nothing like Zoom to make that happen across town or around the world. Zoom ties together all of your communication tools for video conferencing, phone calls, group chat, webinars, and conference rooms. Zoom is how business gets done. Look, efficiency matters. Visit Zoom online to set up your free account today. Meet happy with Zoom.